Okay, we have Project Euler Problem 19 here, counting Sundays. You're given the following information, but you may prefer to do some research yourself. 1st of January 1900 was a Monday, 30 days as September, April, June, and November. All the rest have 31, save in February alone, which is 28 rain or shine, and on leap years, 29. A leap year occurs on any year evenly divisible by 4, but not a century unless it is divisible by 400. How many Sundays fell in the first of the month during the 20th century, 1st January 1901 to 31st December 2000? Now, I was a big dummy and thought that the 1900s was the 20th century and it would be 1900 to 1999, but after I reread the problem and did this, uh, I got the right answer, 171. <laughs> but I'll show you that here and type it out for you as we do. This one's pretty short and it's not too bad. And you know, as with everything ever, we have to include the standard I.O. header. If you see any flickering in the background, my house is not haunted. I just need to replace the light bulb because it's slowly going out. So if it gets suddenly dim or it flickers a bit, I promise there's no ghosts here, at least today. <laughs> but we're not, we're just gonna make, you know, int main void, not gonna pass anything. You know, one thing I learned was that you don't need to return zero explicitly from C. Uh, the fact that it gets to the ending bracket and main returns zero. So, you know, that's valid C, at least for 99. Not for ANSI 89 standard, I don't think, but 99 it is. So we're just gonna go with that because I think Clang's default is C99. Anyway, that has nothing to do with this. So what we're gonna do for this problem is uh, set up, you know, a couple variables here. We need a count of all the first Sundays. So I'm gonna have like a Sunday count variable. We'll just start it at zero. Uh, I'm gonna have a thing to hold the month and the year. So we're going to say month, and we're going to say year, and month, and year. And then to determine if it's a Sunday or not, I'm going to have a thing for the day of the week. So I'm just going to have int day of week. Um, this will be, it can be 0 through 6, 1 through 7, whatever. I'm going to have it be 1 through 7. So I'm going to start it at 1. Uh, we'll just say Monday, 1 out of 7, something like that, right? All right, but to get that in a... To get the day of the week from the first of the month, we have to, you know, loop through all the months in the year. And uh, to do that, we have to know how many days are in every month in the year, which is what the problem gave us. So I'm going to have uh, basically just an array, a single dimension array, call it a uh, month days or days of month or whatever you want to call it. It's going to have 12, you know, months in it. We're going to initialize it to the days of each month. So January is, you know, 31, February is 28 or 29. But as it turns out, the year 1900 was a leap year because it's divisible by four. It's 475. So we're going to have it start at 29 days for February. But uh, I'm just going to fill out this array and I'll get back to you in a second. All right. So you see, I got all the month days filled out here now. 31st January, you know, 31 days, February 29, March, so on and so forth. Um, from what the problem said, it gave you all the days that you needed pretty much. Um, so we didn't have to do our own research for that. But now we got that figured out. So what the problem gave us was the first of uh, January 1900, which is a Monday. So, but we're getting everything from the first of the month, that's a Sunday during the 20th century, which starts in 1901. So we have to determine the day of the week in the first of 1901. And you can look this up or do math, but we can do it in the, pro in the, in the program just as well. And we'll be doing the same thing to get the day of the week for, you know, the rest of the years there anyway. So I'm just gonna have a loop. It's gonna be duplicated. Oh, well, hopefully don't cry foul too much, but I'm just gonna have a loop here. Um, that goes through all the months here for month equals one month less than uh, 12 or less than month days, right? We'll just do less than equal to 12. We could do less than 13. It's fine. Month plus plus. So I'm going to loop through all the months, you know, in, the, in our month days array to, to get all the days for these months. Because we need to determine if the first is a Sunday. Well, we basically just need to get the day of the week. So how, how are we doing that? We're not counting weeks or anything. We're just going to count the days. But the day of the week, um, we're starting at 1 on a Monday. And basically what I'm going to do here is um, every 7 days would be 1 week, right? So if we start at 1 1 1900, 1 8 1900 would also be a Monday. 1 15 1900 would be a Monday. 1 22 1900 would be a Monday. And 1 29 1900. But 1 1, uh, or well, 2 1, the start of February 1900 would be a Monday plus... Uh, three days, right? 29, well, 129 is a Monday. It'd be 30, 31, and then the 1st of February. So what day is that? That would be Monday plus three days, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. It'd be a Thursday. So how do we determine that a little bit easier program programmatically is English. It is in the morning. I need my coffee. All right. 
day of week we're gonna add pretty much um, what I just said so how do we add the days to get the day of the week well we're gonna add our month days or what for whatever days of the month we're on um, we could have we could have started month at zero and went zero to eleven. I did one to twelve, so in my mind it was better for January to December. But we're gonna have to subtract one if we do it like this. So get the days the days of the month. So month minus one indexed into our month days array. So the first month is one. One minus one is zero. The zeroth index for month days is January, thirty one days. So it's thirty one. Um, then we're gonna add that modulo seven. Yeah, I meant to put the parenthesis here. So we're going to divide by 7 and get the remainder. So 31 divided by 7, uh, if, it divided, if it divided evenly, it would be 28. But it's 31, so the remainder is going to be 3, because it's 7 times 4 plus 3 is 31. So the integer remainder for the first month will be 3. So we're going to add 3 to our day of week, which we're counting as Monday. 1 plus 3 is 4. The fourth day of the week is Thursday. So this would, in effect, give us a 4, uh, which would be, you know, we're going to count it as Thursday. So that's not too bad. Um, the only thing we have to do for this just to get the starting day of the week of 1901 is I'm just going to check if it's greater than 7. And if it is greater than 7, I'm going to set it equal to... I'll do it on a separate line. Um, it equals... We'll just reset it and go from there. So 0 plus the, the modulo 7, right? 0 plus day of week. Modulo 7. And I think this will take care of... I think the operator presidents, the modulo will take more than the uh, the plus, so this will work fine. But um, So if day week is greater than 7, if we go through here and we get like 8 or 9 or something into day of week, um, we want to basically roll over to the next week. So it would be 0 plus, you know, whatever is greater than 7. It'll, it'll only ever be pretty much 8, 9, or, or 10. Well, maybe 11. I don't know. But if we get this and we get 3 extra days over, if we're on like a, a Saturday and then the next month has 31 days so we get modulo 7 we get a 3 add it to day of week and so instead of a 6 being saturday it's like a 9 and we'll start over and do 0 plus 9 modulo 7 which would be 2. you know you go two days forward the week rolls back over so that's basically what we're doing here it probably didn't make too much sense oh well but that's how you roll over the weeks so we start over the week and get the right the right week day but um that's all we have to do get, to get to the week for uh for 1900 since we're starting at 1900, um, the first is a Monday. If we just go through the 12 months once, we'll effectively be at 1901 and get the start of the week for that, or the day of the week for that. So then we can go through all the years. Um, and we're, we're, I'm going to replicate this for loop within this other loop, so it is duplicating code, but oh well. Um, let's put, uh, I'm going to put a comment here right quick anyway. Get starting day of week for... 1, 1, 1901. There we go. All right. And then we're going to loop through the 20th century. So count up all Sundays on the first of month. All right. So we can do this, you know, a little bit better conceptually. We'll say for year equals 1901. That's why I name my variables like this. Year less than or equal 2000 or less than 2001. Either way. That would save you character typing, but I do my loops like this. So we'll loop through all the years in the 20th century. Um, we need to check for a leap year. So I'm going to do that first because leap year will determine if February has 28 or 29 days. So I'm going to check it by century first. And then if it's not a century year, it'll go down to the regular year. I'll do by century, then by, I don't know, regular year. Or something something like that so the way I'm gonna do this is say if um, I might do the parentheses after I type this out if the year is divisible by 100 then it's a century but to determine if it's a century that's a leap year it has to be evenly divisible by 400 so if year uh, modulo 100 is 0 if it's evenly divisible by 100 then it's a century and if it's can't type. If it's evenly divisible by 400, then the century is a leap year. So we'll do that. Um, and then we'll do or, if it's a regular year, we're just going to check if the year is evenly divisible by 4. Right, that's what I got in my notes. Yeah, that sounds good to me. Okay. So we'll add one. Let's do... 
need to put your conditions inside parentheses. So we need th three, I believe. Yeah, we need two for that or this one for that. All right, that should be three, okay. And if it's not, then the compiler will tell me I'm wrong. So if it is a leap year, um, then we're just gonna set the days and our month days array to, to 29, if it's not already. So month days one, or the second, you know, for February, we're gonna set equal to 29. We'll do else. I don't need to use brackets here, but I will to make it a little better structure. Else we're gonna set it to 28, because it's a regular year. So after we determine if it's a leap year or not, we have all the months, so we need to loop through all the months. So we're basically gonna do our loop up here again. So I'll copy this in, there we go. And then we'll tab it over. So if we loop through all the months in the year, now that we know if it's a leap year or not, we need, you know we can do the same thing to get the day of the week, that's fine. If it's greater than seven, we do that. We also need to determine if it is a seven in this, however. So if day of week um, is seven, oh, well, we could do an else if probably. Let's change it up a little bit. We'll do an else if, we don't do it like that. All right, else if day of the week is seven, um, then we increase our Sunday count because we're on um, the day of the week, we're on the first of the month and it is a Sunday, so we're gonna increase our Sunday count. And um, that's all we have to do for this problem, so we're pretty good. This will loop through all the years, determine if it's a leap year, if the, you know, get the day of the week for the next month on the first, if it is a Sunday, then we're gonna increase the Sunday count, so we are, Good to go. So all I'm gonna do is print out our uh, our max final answer here, Sunday count, it's an integer, so I'll do a D, I'll do a couple new lines, put it on its own line. Sunday count, and we should be good to go if I didn't type anything in wrong, which to be honest, I probably did, because I always do, so. <laughs> did call this 19, right? Yeah, yep, error, end of declaration, 26, okay. Yep, you do need these for, um, if you're declaring and initializing a variable, you do need a semicolon at the end, like if you have a struct or anything for an array. But um, for the functions, you, you don't, which is always nice. For the functions, you don't need to do that. Your percent percent 400 is also not valid. That is true, all right. So we got that, and now we're good. And Sunday count 171, so there we go. 171. We are nice. We're good to go. That is our answer. Hey, oh, so this problem, you know, it's pretty short. It's pretty easy. Just loop through all the years and loop through all the months in that year. Determine, you know, how far away it is from the previous day of the week for the start of the month. And then you're good. Add that to your day of week. If it's a Sunday, increase it. And you're good to go. So it's pretty easy. So I hope you all enjoyed that. Uh, the next one will be problem 20, factorial digit sum. You know, get get those factorials back if we didn't already do one. I forget. I've only done 19. Anyway, we'll get to that one next time. Thank you all for watching. Uh, yeah, I'll see you on the next one.